Say you're having an issue with your program and it's having a connecting issue. Usually, like we would in a browser or in any other file, we can just do control F in our file of choice and then we can just type in connection and then we can see where in our code is there some sort of connection component to it. And if we're not sure where to start in our code, like say we're in the main file and then we do connection here, but we don't see any results, we would want to search through our entire code base. So we can just go edit, find in files, and then we can just type in connection here. And then you can see where all the files were in which we have that this idea of connections in our program. So there's some in the authservice.c, authservice.h, and dbconfig.h. So these are some suspects of where our bug could be happening. So this is one way you can search for a string in your code base. But did you know that there's another way that you can search your code? When I was at my first company, I was taught this tool called grep. And grep is a very easy and simple tool that you can use to search your code. And the reason why a lot of developers like using this tool is because it's very versatile and can do a lot of different things other than just searching your code. And you can use it in scripts. And I'll talk about more how you can use it in this video. And I'll teach you some basic ways that you can start using grep today. So my name's Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the foundations of software development. So let's get started. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. Before talking about why you would want to use grep, let's go ahead and run it in terminal so you can see how it works. So let's open a new terminal and we can do grep dash R for recursive so that we can search through recursively through our folders. Then we're going to do dash N so we can see the line numbers and then dash I so that we can ignore cases. So we'll just do connection like we did here up here over here. We're just going to do that. And then we're going to do dot for the current directory. And there you go. So it's able to show me the same results as the one over here. So let's minimize this one. And so there you go. So there you can see the same results. So we have in this file, line 18, there's some, there's connection pool here. There's connection, connection, connection. And so we have all of these results. So basically it just shows us the same thing as this one over here. All right, now you have a basic idea of how grep works. Now, why would you want to learn it? The reason you would want to learn grep is the same reason why you would want to learn how to search your files in your IDE. This is just a very powerful tool to have to be able to search your code base, right? But the thing is with terminal, if you can do it in terminal, you can do this anywhere. You don't even need to have an IDE. And this was the main use case that I had in my first job. Uh, a lot of times we would SSH into different servers and we wouldn't have access to an IDE. And so in those scenarios, we needed to use grep to do a search on some of the files that we have in, in that server. So that was one of the reasons why I learned grep in that company. All right, the second reason why you would want to use grep is because it's a tool that you can run in terminal. It's a command line tool you can actually use this in scripts. And so this is what I did a lot in my first company when I wanted to automate a workflow, or if I wanted to automate something through a script, I would use grep a lot. So I would use grep to do a search, and then I would also use grep to filter out different output. And so I'll, I'll show you a little bit on how you can use grep in those ways later on. Overall, grep is just a very powerful tool that you can use to do a search in your computer. So in the same sense that you found that the find in files functionality to be useful in your IDE. This is useful because it allows you to search through your whole code base. But the, that's the drawback is that you can only do this in your code base. But with grep, you can do this in your whole computer. So the scope of the grep command is a lot great is much greater and you can do a lot more things with it. And another drawback is that if you want to do a search in your code base, you have to load it in this IDE. You have to open your IDE, then you have to go to file, then open folder, and then you have to find your code base. And if it's not in that code base, then you have to close that code base, open another code base, and then find it. 
But if you had known how to use grep, then you can just do this uh, command and then just run it in a top level directory and then just run it. And then you can know immediately which directory has that um, function. Like say you're searching for a function, you can just run this grep command, put in the function, and then you already know which code base has it. You don't have to waste time opening things up in your IDE. And another thing is this search here is actually, this one will take longer than a grep command. Typically a grep command will just, will be able to do the search a lot faster. So if you have a huge code base or if you have a huge library and then you wanna see if that library has the function that you need, you can just do a grep and then be able to find your function immediately. All right, let's dive a little bit deeper on this tool and I'll show you examples of how you can use it. So let's go into that example I did before and it looks kind of intimidating because we have all these options, but let's do the really simple case. So we'll just have grep connection and then we'll have to specify a directory. So that's the really simple way to use it. We just specify, we just say grep and then the string we want and then a file that we want to do this grep in. So you can do that. And then you can see already, this is where it is, connection. These are the files, or sorry, these are the lines that have that string. But say we want to search not just for connection, that string itself, but we want to do, we want to ignore the cases. So this is when we would do grep-i to ignore the, the cases. So we can just type connection like that. And then uh, we'll be able to do a search there. All right, so now we're getting more results. So now we have this line here. This has connections in all caps. This one has connection in all lowercase. And then we have, we still have the ones, the results that we had earlier. Now this is really confusing to look at because you don't know which lines go together. Like are these all, are they, are these two lines in back to back in the file or are they different lines of the file? So this is when you would want to use um, dash N so that we can see the the line, the line number. So there you go, now we can see 13, 14, 15. So we know that these lines are together and then 17, so we know that there's actually a line in between here. So that's when you use N. And then lastly, what is that R for? That is for recursive. So we wanna do a recursive search. So we wanna do, we can do recursive search here and then um, we can run it with this file and then it will show you um, in auth service c it'll specify the file and then show you the line number and then it'll show you all of the lines that have connection in it but if you want to do a search on multiple files then you need to use dash r and you don't need to use you don't need to specify just one file you can actually just specify it on the whole directory and then there you go so now we can see we did this connection search on our whole source directory. If you look at our source directory, we have a few files here. We have a C file and two header files. Um, and then we do that, we can run that command, but it, the connection string is only found in this one file here, this auth service.c file. But if we want to search through our whole directory, our whole code base, not just the source directory, then we need to remove source. So let's remove source. And then there you go. So we did that connection and now we have service.c. Um, and so we have more results here. Now we have the dbconfig.h, dbconfig.h. And so those are the two files that have this connection string in it. And so now we're back to that original um, that original command, this this command here. So now you know exactly how this command works. We're able to do a recursive search, ignore cases, and look at the file, the file line, or the, the line number of the file. All right, so that's the basic way of using grep. Now we can actually be more fancy and we can start excluding certain files, like certain file types. Like say we want to exclude all of the C files and we want to only look in the header files. So we can actually do this, we can do dot dot exclude, and then we can specify dot C. I need to add a star also. Okay, so there you go. So now it's only going to show me the H, the header files. So let's do it clear so it looks cleaner. 
Okay, so when I run now, I now that I did this exclude, I'm excluding all the C files. I'm only looking at the header files, so it actually I can see my results more clearly. It's going to be an auth service.h and dbconfig.h, and so these are the two places where, or these are the two files, the two header files that have that string connection. Now this is useful because say you want to exclude like some out files or you want to exclude some binary files, then you can just do exclude and then those file extensions. And say you want to also do others, like exclude other files, you can just do exclude equals and we can exclude the header files too. And so there you go. So there's no results now because I excluded the C files and the header files and those are the only files that have that connection string. Like how we did the exclude, we can actually do include and we can say that we only want to look at the C files and say we have a bunch of binaries we don't, or maybe we have some text files, we don't want those text files to be in our search. So we can just, we can just do include star.c and this will only give us the C files. So there you go. So it's only showing us auth service.c and so the header files are not in the results here. Now let's go into some advanced ways that you can use grep. So you can actually use grep to filter out some output. So say we did, we use cat to print out the output of one of our files. So say we're going to print out the auth service.c file. So it's showing us all of these results. Now this is a, this is how I use grep a lot in my first company because I would get, I would look at the output here and then Say I only wanted to look for a string here. I only wanted to find this function here. Like say I wanted to just find what is the return type of this check DB connection function. So what I would do is I would do cat that, but then I would do a pipe and then I'll do grep and then I would type in my function. And then this one, this pipe, what, what it does is it takes the output here and then it does a grep on the output. So we do this, and so there you go. So it's going to only print out the files that, or it's only gonna print out the lines that have that um, function call. And so this is how I used grep a lot in my first company. Let's also add the line numbers. And so there you go. So now we have the line number 14 and 29. So now we know where in our files um, this function is. All right, now let's go into a really fancy way of using grep. And you don't have to use grep this way. Just worry about using it the way that you like to use it and how it can actually help you in your code base, in your development. So this is just an example of what you could do. Just show you the possibilities of how powerful grep is. So we can do grep, and then we're going to specify a regular expression. And we're going to, we're going to say don't output that uh, line. So what we're going to do, we're going to do grep dash v and then we have to do uh, caret id and then if we do this what we're basically doing and let's specify the file as well so what we do when you do this is we're just going to print out all of the lines that don't start with id and so if you do that it will just give us the data so it's it's not going to give us the the header line here it's just going to give us the data and just for just to help you understand this more, if we were to give it like 1001, now it's not going to print out this line here. It's only going to print out all, all the lines except for that 1001. So yeah, 1001 is missing there. So that's what this is why I did the caret ID. So it's going to print out all of the lines except for the, the header file, the header line there. And then what we can do is we can do that grep thing where we do grep and then we can do uh, failed. And then now we only have the one line where it has the word failed in it. And so there's only, there's only, oh, there's actually two people who failed. There's Bob and Dave who failed. But it's only showing me Dave because Dave is a failed with all caps. So we can just do grep dash i and failed, and then it will show us Bob and Dave. And so this is a one one way we one way you can use grep twice. You can use grep to output the CSV file just to do a quick output. And then we can use grep again to see who failed or 
just see only the lines that show us who failed. And then we can also we can also use the dash n for the line numbers so we know where in the CSV file those failed users are. So we have two and four here. So this is a really so you can actually string commands or you can string some grep commands together. And I did this a lot also in my scripts where I would use grep, I would do grep, uh, pipe grep, pipe grep, and then I would get the output that I wanted. And so that will help me do some analysis, some dirty, quick and dirty analysis. So I don't even have to write a C file to parse this CSV file. That, that would be uh, too much work to write a whole program. I can just use grep to do, to do the analysis for me. I suppose you could use AI to write a C file that would parse this CSV file for you. But why use AI when you can use grep and then just do it in one line? I mean, of course, you can do a one line in a, in a command prompt with AI, but then you have to copy and paste that code, and then you have to run the code, compile the code, run the code. But you can just use grep here and just run this one line, and then you can see who failed right, right away. You don't have to worry about any AI chatbots or anything like that. All right, there you go. So that's a basic overview of grep and why you would want to learn grep and why you would want to use grep. And like I said earlier, I did use grep a lot in my first company because we were using Linux a lot. And so I did a lot of, I used grep a lot, but in my second company, we don't use grep as much because we code in Windows. So I do a lot of um, find and files, but grep is a very powerful tool that I used a lot in my previous company. And I hope you can start using it in your development. I hope you start to use it more in your terminal. It's a really fast command that you can do. And you don't have to worry about all these different search filters in your find in files in your IDE. You can just pull up a terminal and do a quick search. And I hope that it helps your workflow. And I hope it doesn't overwhelm you with all the ways that you can use grep, but I hope it empowers you in your coding development. Right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and then go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it really helped you out. And if it did help you out, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And also comment down below what you found most helpful in this grep tutorial. And if you want to watch another video, be sure to watch this one here. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.